Hi, welcome to week three of City Vision Social Entrepreneurship course. My name is Andrew Sears, and this week is really going to be focused on the business model canvas. Um, you should be aware that this is uh, going to be one of the most challenging weeks to really master. Um, a lot of this course is going to be focused on mastering it. Um, the, the canvas appears simple uh, to start off, but it's actually really complex um, in many ways. It can um, it holds all the components of a business plan, but it's a lot more concise and that actually makes it a lot more difficult. One of my favorite quotes is from Benjamin Franklin, where he said, I would have written you a shorter letter if I had more time. And the same principle applies to the business model canvas to write your, you know, components of a business plan in a more dynamic environment. And to do that, you know, very concisely, um, takes more work in, in some ways than writing a business plan. So in some ways, what we're doing this week is having you do, um, you know, part of your, a significant portion of your final project early on. And um, so, you know, if this were a business planning course, this would be the final project. So spend effort on it accordingly. Um, you won't, most likely you won't understand this as, as in depth to implement it in your first attempt. So try to study all the material this week. This week is going to be one of those weeks where you want to take notes and then pause and then rewind and take notes um, some more. So the whole point of this course is to learn an iterative process that involves updating your business model canvas. To, so be sure to do significant updates to it based on learning a future week. So again, coming back to that diagram that we showed, you know, you're going to do one round on your canvas and we're going to just do portions of the, your canvas, but then each week you're going to be doing another round and another round. So, and the idea is that you're going to start off with workbook one and you might have, say, you're just a launch based on what you have on workbook one. You might have a 10% chance of success. Some of you are going to be above that, some of it below. Um, but by iterating, you're going to get to a 40% chance of success or, you know, some above, some, some below. And the reality is, if you want to get to the 80% chance of success on iteration, it's going to take beyond the eight weeks that you have in this course. Um, so just recognizing that. Now, again, the differences between the business model canvas and the business plan, this is higher risk, higher uncertainty. I'm not going to go into all the, the details, um, but this is that's the focus of this course. It's focused on the create um, entrepreneurial quadrant. So here's how to get your business model canvas to work with an existing nonprofit. So focus your canvas on a new initiative. We don't want you to do a canvas for the entire nonprofit. Now, if you want to do that as a learning exercise, you can create a second slide and do your whole nonprofit. And actually, if I were doing this, that's what I would do um, because it can be hard to understand how a new initiative might work without understanding how your organization, but the, the primary focus should be on your new initiative. Um, you may use revenue streams and resources from the large organization for your outside, um, you know, outside your initiative if they are available. For example, you're going to launch a new initiative. You have a business uh, building available. You might have funding sources if your executive director says they're going to fund it. Um, but you need to know that, that that would actually be viable. That would be part of your interview process if you think you're, you're going to do that. Um, so most nonprofits have two primary customer segments, donors and clients, and these are listed in your template. Um, so you should focus most of your effort on the first five sections of the campus. I'll explain that in the next slide. Highlight each major segment in a different color as there will be um, typically unique components for, um, for items one to six for each segment. And as I mentioned, if you prefer, you can make a second copy of this and do it for your whole organization. So now what is the canvas? So what's important in looking at the business model canvas um, is to recognize that there's an order to go through these things. So you're supposed to do customer segments first and each one kind of builds on the other and, and relates to the other. So you start with customer segments and you're going to have client segments and donor segments. And I showed this highlighted in green so that as you go to your next section, you're going to have clients and they're going to have value propositions. So this is what is important to the clients or why are the donors giving, or if it's a customer, you know, what way of communicating value to them do they, you know, care about? So for the iPhone, it's about, it's simple and it's easy to use and it's creative, you know, um, and for the channels, often you'll have different channels. So if you're a nonprofit, you're gonna have different channels where you get your clients than where you get your donors, right? So that's your, and 
We're, we'll talk some about the get, keep, and and save, uh, or get, keep, and grow. Um, and most of this will relate to get. Sometimes this will relate to get, and I'll explain that um, more deeply. But um, for clients, it's keep and grow. Often, if you're in a nonprofit, you'll have some sort of client tracking system, and you'll also have a donor tracking system. So you might you know reference that. And then you have key activities um, for each of those segments. And often the, the resources and partners will, will operate across those segments. The revenue stream, um, some organizations like City Vision has a lot of revenue from students and then also from, from donors. Um, then you have cost structure and you have key resources. So um, now one thing to focus on, the right side of this in many ways is where there's a lot more uncertainty, a lot more creativity. This is focused on, you know, the big picture of marketing, which really is about, do you have product market fit? So a lot of this course is going to be iterating on, do you have product market fit? You may have a great product, but you have the wrong market. Um, and then this, this left side here is really more focused on operations and logistics. So, you know, the cost structure, key resources. And honestly, we're not going to spend that much time on, on this because you could get lost, you know, doing a detailed, you know, 40 line budget on your cost structure. That's not the purpose of, of this course. It's just to give some big picture ideas um, on this. And so for each of these, you're going to have your, your various components um, in this. Now, we also talk about the nonprofit business model canvas. And um, part of the reason why we do this is this slide and the canvas itself can be um, helpful to thinking about nonprofit examples. So they talk about, you know, they call customers co-creators. I'm not sure, depending on what type of nonprofit you have, that may make sense or may not make sense. Um, then they have channels, relations, social value propositions. Um, you know, you can decide how you want to, you know, term these things, outcome streams. I've combined that on our canvas. So you have outcomes and revenue. Um, so I'm going to give a quick overview of how we did City Vision's business model canvas. And I'm not showing all the detail that we have internally because some of it's private, but um, I'm giving most of the detail, like 95% of the detail. So, and, and we're using this kind of like, so we often get funders that ask us for a one page business plan. So the first time we're doing this, and if we're doing a new program, we're not going to provide this level of detail. So in many ways, I'm using this as a one page business plan, not necessarily as a canvas for iterate, iterating. Um, we can have initiative campus canvases um, that might iterate. And if there's students that are also staff or, or contractors with City Vision, I would encourage them to create a um you know a separate canvas for a particular initiative um and uh so you know we have two main um segments we have uh students and within the students we have individuals and we have partners and then we have donors and within that we have um pr value propositions and i focused on students in general and then we talked about some segments here so this is where you're going to want to really think about you know, we, we provide a lot of demographic data, but the value proposition doesn't change dramatically across the demographic data, but the value proposition may change for different segments. So here we have student in general, this is across almost all our students. Then we have some students, you know, a lot, a lot of our students are employed. So some students are employed um, and they want to get a job. So they want to get a credential and get education to get a job. Then we have our students that we call our re-entry students and Often these are people who may have been homeless or in, in prison or um, in addiction, re uh, a residential re addiction recovery program in the last three years. And, um, you know, they will have similar often needs to, to these and some of the unemployed students. But they also want courses, faculty and students that are supportive of ex-offenders, people who are recovering from addiction and the formerly homeless. Um, because, you know, a lot of people, you go to school and you're like, wow, I'm like the only person who was in jail a year ago. Here you come to City Vision and you're like, wow, there's a lot of students who are in a similar spot to me not that long ago. And you feel, um, you know, like you're a part, of, you're with your people um, and people understand you and aren't going to judge you. Um, so with the, uh, with our partners, you have different ways of, of selling things. I'm not going to go into all the detail. Um, but I want you to understand some of the patterns. Then you have channels. We have different channels for 
individual students, our partners, our donors. Um, I didn't put our donors here partly just because of the lack of space and I wanted to focus on the other ones. Customer relationships, you have revenue streams, you have um, key activities, current resources, accreditation, affiliation, and cost structure. Um, now, I, I asked Charlie to also do the same thing for a rescue mission. Um, and I'm going to go over this fairly quickly, but I would strongly encourage you to go to the resources section of the course and download these and look at these slides more extensively. So here, um, you know, the rescue mission is, has, uh, you know, women and children, um, and has men's programs. And often that's, that's a division. Here's some of the demographic data. Um, you know, I think I might add that, you know, in the segment you have, um, and this comes back to the value proposition and, and some of the other things, but you have the, those are, are staying in your shelter and, and those that um, are in, in programs. And then for clients, you have a value pro proposition. Those who are seeking relief, they only want housing, food, and medical services. Um, and then, you know, ultimately most rescue missions are about development. So a transformational relationship with Christ, re reducing, eliminating life controlling addictions, reconciling relationships, getting education and skills for em employment, getting a job um and improve life management skills and then donors you know ultimately why are they giving so um that that's what you're covering then you have you know your different channels where you're getting your donors where you're getting your clients um then you have customer relationships you know clients you have activities resources key partners your the the various cost structure um and you know you can break down the the cost per participant in various capacities and uh, things along those lines. So um, the next presentation is gonna be going over a workbook for Business Model Canvas. And if you have any questions, please ask your faculty member. Thanks a lot.